as you know, like uh, in our previous uh, uh, discussions, uh, we talk about the general properties of virus. There we could get some uh, very unique uh, feature of viruses, like in terms of their nucleic acid, in terms of uh, their structural arrangement, uh, they are quite peculiar. They do not match us with the regular um, organisms, what we uh, studied, uh, microorganisms like uh, bacteria, fungi, etc. So, um, definitely this uh, the viruses, they, they had a unique uh, place in this uh, whole system. And since uh, they had certain properties uh, by which we can say that they had certain uh, individual entity in this world, like they can replicate and have their progeny generations can pass the genetic material to the next generation and from one virus particle millions of virus particles can be synthesized inside a living host system so uh, uh, we need an, uh, some orderly arrangement of this uh, uh, virus particle so that it help us in understanding and study the viruses so in in a previous class again we talk about the basic uh, structure of viruses where repeatedly i am mentioning that the most simplest form of the virus is uh, uh, nucleic acid one kind of nucleic acid surrounded with a protein coat uh, we call it a capsid and together the structure is called as nucleocapsid which is the most simplest form of viruses in fact many of our uh, viruses of our importance that we are going to study in this particular course are a simple nucleocapsid structure and um, they do not have any other organelles or uh, they do not have any metabolic activity so uh, when we could visualize the viruses it has been seen that they are having a particular nature and we could see some uh, shape to the organism so while describing the shape of a virus particle, it has been seen that the, the arrangement of the capsomers to form the capsid layer gives us a definite uh, shape to the virus. And this is uh, uh, rather than a particular shape, we describe it as a symmetry. So basically there are two types of symmetry as we have discussed in our previous class. One is the icosahedral symmetry and another is the helical symmetry. So the viruses, they belonging to either a icosahedral or helical symmetry. So that again help us in classifying the viruses and grouping them in the respective uh, position in the taxonomy of viruses. However, also I mentioned that uh, there are certain viruses, more particularly the pox viruses, which doesn't have a definite uh, uh, symmetrical arrangement of uh, capsumer to form the capsids. Rather, it is in very haphazard way the capsumers form the layer, and we term it as an uh, <coughs> Uh, and, uh, no symmetry or complex symmetry. Rather, this complex symmetry is not a symmetry. It is, uh, doesn't belong to icosahedral or helical. Okay. I feel that uh, part is clear to all of you. Uh, while uh, discussing, if anybody asks you what is an icosahedral symmetry, then we must understand that this is a uh, geometrical uh, arrangement uh, and it is described as a uh, 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 structures having 12 vertices then 30 edges and 20 faces of a nucleotidal triangle that uh, the descriptions of an icosahedral uh, uh, symmetry however it has been seen that there are certain viruses where the triangular faces are not uniform in size in uh, that means uh, the triangular faces are also having certain minor folding, what we call as, as a facet. Uh, this capsids, they arrange in such a manner that uh, they give rise to some facets, which we that termed it as a triangulation number or number T. So by knowing the triangulation number, we can calculate how many capsomers will be there in an icosahedral symmetry. So those part uh, in the previous class I discussed it. Then again, in the in case of the helical symmetry, simply we mentioned it that 
the capsule mirror, they arranged in an helical fashion and give rise to an cylindrical structures. And within these cylindrical structures, the nucleic acid remain protected, right? Then we also talk about uh, uh, that there are certain viruses uh, which acquired an additional uh, layer from the infected host cells, what we call as an envelope. And as such, we could call the envelope and the non-envelope viruses. So envelope viruses, they simply acquire the envelope uh, from the host cell, from the site where they come out of the host cell. So uh, more, uh, we'll discuss in that replication part. So we can say the envelope and the non-envelope uh, viruses. Then we talk about the chemical compositions, uh, nucleic acids, uh, different types of nucleic acids. Again, I'm uh, requesting you to go through the different kinds of uh, or peculiarities that we found in case of the viral nucleic acids, like um, the single-stranded DNA virus, the double-stranded RNA virus. Then we talk about positive sense and the negative sense. If anything is not understandable to you, please put forward and uh, we, we had more scope for discussions on those uh, things. So things should be very much clear to you. Once again, I'm repeating. When we talk about the sense or polarity of nucleic acids, then it says that uh, the, the, the positive sense RNA virus, uh, their uh, the genomic arrangement or the genomic sequence, RNA sequence, is similar to that of uh, the messenger RNA. No transcriptions occur. So a positive sense RNA virus, once the nucleic acid gets released into the host cells, then immediately protein translation takes place. Okay. So uh, at the initial stage, no transcriptions occur. However, in case of the negative sense RNA viruses, so transcription is must. Once the virus releases its nucleic acid inside the host cell, that nucleic acid must have to undergo transcription. So from an RNA and another messenger RNA need to be formed. So for that, they must possess a very unique enzyme called as RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So that enzyme is not present in the eukaryotic cells where the virus grows and multiplies. So those negative sense RNA virus have to carry the enzyme in their nucleocapsid structure. Then lastly, we talk about the, uh, the retroviruses. No, I'm not um, um, shifting my slide. I'm just reviewing in the previous class only. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> that the retrovirus is uh, having the diploid genome where it is an RNA virus, but they convert it into double-stranded DNA by utilizing the, uh, uh, the, the reverse transcript these enzymes and get integrated to the host cell chromosome. Uh, that uh, that uh, the stage is called as the provirus stage. So, these unique things you have to remember and all the times and that gives us a peculiar nature for the viruses okay uh, somebody asked me about uh, i have given some example of segmented rna viruses like uh, the ortho mixo viruses having um, six seven eight different segments so i was asking about the numbers these are the uh, segments in different uh, genus under that family having that uh, many numbers of segments in their RNA. Okay? Uh, most of the viruses having a single molecule only, but uh, there are certain RNA viruses where the genome is segmented. We call it as a multipartite genome. So uh, the, all the genes are distributed in this individual segment. So that again keeps a very peculiar phenomenon that we'll be discussing in the subsequent class about the genetic reassortment this can uh, gives us more information to why uh, the, the, the influence of viruses can uh, evolve at any time and get lead to an uh, pandemic uh, conditions. We similarly, we see that this is called as the blue tongue disease. It's in segmented RNA virus infections in uh, sheep and goat, very much prevalent in our country. We, we could see several different types, serotypes, 
is because of the phenomenon of genetic reassortment that we'll be discussing in the subsequent class and that is strictly related to the segmented genome so before going for the individual families and the um, organism we must have a very clear idea about the nature of viruses the chemical composition of viruses the structural and non-structural proteins and then glycoproteins or the spikes proteins presence on the surface of the viruses so uh, with uh, having that basic idea about the viruses we it will be easier for us to understand the viral taxonomy all of you know about the orderly arrangement of these organisms are very, very essential for understanding and study this uh, um, particles, virus particle, okay? So um, there was some difficulties uh, while uh, describing and arranging these viruses uh, in a systematic order. Um, because they have a lot of variations and uh, they have been a lot of uh, different um, uh, biological properties and uh, very limited informations uh, were available uh, because of their particle uh, size nature uh, then um, study of the viruses again uh, the individual uh, as a particle, it is again difficult. So because of which it, it took some, some time to uh, go for that uh, systematic arrangement of viruses. Now also it is going on almost every month, some changes and new proposals uh, we could see uh, and, uh, and the classifications and uh, taxonomic arrangement of viruses. So initially, if you see some, uh, some sort of historical background, like uh, in 1939 only, some proposal has come about uh, to classify the viruses. And at that time, it was mostly focused on the uh, morphology and chemical and serological uh, character of the viruses. And gradually it was updated. And uh, by around 1960s, uh, people start uh, Mm, including the symptoms produced by the viruses uh, and uh, cytocidal disturbances, whether it is causes massive destructions of um, bloods or tissues or certain specific organ systems, those were considered for naming the viruses, including the uh, certain insect vector responsible for transmission of diseases. As such, in the earlier literature, you will find a word called as arboviruses. Any arthropod borne viral diseases are termed as arboviruses. Those were uh, very popular at the time, in 60s and 70s. But uh, uh, this Peter de Cooper, in 1961, first time he proposed that we should include the type of nucleic acids for classification of viruses and, and then onward it was uh, the utmost priority that if any viruses we want to classify them in the heretical system then we should consider whether the nucleic acid is dna or rna such all the viruses we classify them as the dna virus or rna virus and thereafter an uh, allied states uh, leo horn and tonier classification systems come up and they uh, they mainly uh, focused on um, uh, the other characteristics including the nucleic acids then capsid structure um, then arrangement so what we call as the herical virus classification systems this um, um, LHT system of classification so this herical uh, virus classification systems from uh, an orderly arrangement, uh, the initial stage, we divide them as the DNA and RNA viruses, then we come to the envelope, non-envelope viruses, then uh, capsid symmetry, likewise, uh, this classifications was done. And uh, later part, uh, David Baltimore, this is another development took place, uh, who, uh, class, who proposed a uh, uh, classification or upgradation of the existing hierarchical classification system uh, to uh, with a newer level and his basis of classification was uh, on the, the how the transcriptions uh, of viruses takes place and as such he proposed for seven different uh, classes of viruses in his uh, classification system 
So finally, in 1973, this uh, International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses, this is an international agency now throughout the globe, we follow the recommendation put forwarded by ICTB. It was formed in 1973 and initially they, in their uh, seventh report, they described about uh, only three uh, orders and it was start from the orders. But later on, it was upgraded uh, to phylum, class, order, family, subfamily, genus, species, and a strain type isolate. Interestingly, what you need to note it down is that uh, unlike the bacteria, in case of the viruses, we describe the viruses by writing its species name. And it is uh, not the genus and species together. So only by species uh, we describe the uh, virus and then uh, all others uh, separately we mention it, okay? And most of the time uh, for um, like uh, study the viruses, we basically start it from the family, okay? Family, subfamily, genus, species, okay? So some of the um, criteria for hierarchical classification was the nature of nucleic acids, symmetry of capsids, presence and absence of envelope, dimensions, uh, structure, shape of the viruses. So as I said that uh, the ICTV at the initial stages, they described only three, but uh, as on today's date, it goes up to uh, um, uh, 130 uh, different um, families and the order, almost 56 orders are there. So initially it was the three orders, Mononiga virales, Kodo virales, and Nido virales. So Mononiga virales, Mono means single, uh, so it's referred to the non-segmented RNA virus um, and negative saints, Niga. Kodo, uh, um, they describe it, all the bacteriophages which are having a tail-like structures to Kodo virales. And uh, the Nido virales, uh, this is quite interesting. So at the later part, we'll discuss about what uh, we mean by the nested set of messenger RNA. Nido means uh, the, the word derived from NIDAS or nest, how this nested set of messenger RNA are formed, that we'll discuss it. In fact, this uh, uh, present conditions, uh, the SARS uh, COVID-19 virus, it's a Nido virales member. So uh, for uh, the, 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 the uh, taxonomic classification of viruses, uh, we describe the orders with the suffix virales. This uh, slide, please note it down, it's important for you. These are not uh, in order, I mean, these are not uh, related viruses, simply for uh, example only I'm giving you. These are different type of viruses, okay? In any order, it is suffix with virales, like mononiga virales, V-I-R-A-L-E-S virales. So if it is a family, then we call it a wide ID. So, uh, yeah, a wide ID. Um, the suffix is uh, the wide ID. Like the picona wide ID, harpies wide ID. It's a, uh, these are some examples, okay? So if within the family, if you're having some subfamily, then it is designated as virini, V-I-R-I-N-A-E. Uh, for example, in case of the alpha herpes viruses, we have the uh, herpes virus family. We have the alpha, beta, and gamma herpes viruses. So alpha herpes virini, it's a subfamily. Please note it down. Subfamily is suffix with virini. And the genus is written as virus. So the species, as I say, doesn't have any uh, genus species uh, order. Rather, in uh, athletics, uh, we write it. So when you write in the examination, you have to underline it. It's uh, the species like uh, this is an al a Gallic alpha herpes virus one. It's a cause of the marine disease in poultry. Like uh, infectious laryngotracheitis virus. These are the name of species. So um, these systems are universally followed uh, throughout the globe. And then uh, this gives us some uniformity that people will understand about the taxonomic position of a virus that uh, you're describing. So as I said, David Baltimore, uh, he put forward it, uh, a classification scheme uh, where he considered the nucleic acid and then the method of replication, particularly mechanism of messenger RNA uh, transcriptions, how it occur. And he described to seven different groups, uh, uh, 
and all these groups are related to different types of uh, the nucleic acids like double stranded dna then uh, um, then single stranded dna then double stranded rna single stranded uh, positive sense rna single stranded negative sense rna then uh, single stranded uh, um, RNA, positive sense RNA with DNA intermediate, okay, then uh, group 8, it's a double stranded DNA with RNA intermediate. So, this uh, uh, where it is observations and on the basis of how the messenger RNA transcripts occur, he classified into seven different uh, groupings, multi-mode classifications uh, famously known as and like the double stranded DNA straightway, uh, we can go to the next slide here, how these transcriptions occur. Like the, the regular double stranded DNA, the messenger RNA transcription occur, where a single stranded DNA first, they will convert to double stranded DNA, then only the messenger RNA transcription will occur. Then in case of the RNA, so like uh, the double stranded RNA, the straightway messenger RNA transcriptions will uh, occur from that. Then in case of uh, having the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase enzyme, in case of the positive sense RNAs, no transcriptions occur straightway, uh, the protein translations may uh, cause. And uh, these early proteins, again, the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, the virus genome will utilize for second uh, uh, genomic replication, uh, the transcriptions may occur. Similarly, group five, again, in, uh, the negative sense uh, using the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, the messenger RNA transcription occur. In case of the group uh, six, uh, it's, uh, the, uh, the retroviruses uh, using the reverse transcriptase from RNA and DNA will form, and from then DNA, the messenger RNA transcriptions will occur. Similarly, the group eight in the delta viruses, where um, the partly double stranded, partly single stranded genome, DNA genome. So by reverse transcriptase, again, the double stranded DNA will form and transcriptions will occur. So his observation, the Baltimore classification was based, uh, basically based on the method of uh, replication, mechanism of messenger and generation. Okay. So finally, this uh, ICTV, they uh, considered both the heretical and Baltimore systems, uh, the existing systems, and then finally they uh, give the proposal. And now onward, whatever we follow is as far the uh, ICTV's recommendation. Please note it down in the Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses. Okay. So in 2020 release, they had see, 59 orders. And uh, initially it was only three orders, now 59 different orders are there. Of course, these figures will be difficult for you to uh, remember. And then uh, just a second. Uh, okay, um, but uh, uh, what does uh, uh, 2020 they propose for a 15 rank of the viruses describing in different uh, starting from the relame, then the sub relame kingdom, sub kingdom, phylum, sub phylum, class, sub class order, sub other family subfamily genus, subgenus, and species like that way. And uh, as I said that uh, we will be uh, restricting to the uh, family, in some cases order, but uh, most of the time from the family we'll start to discuss about the viruses. So um, at this point, uh, I'd like to give you an appraisal about uh, any one of anybody can assess this classification online. There is a uh, specific website uh, maintained by ICTV. Uh, let me give you a small demo for it. Uh, uh, I'm now uh, going to my uh, where yeah, Google screen. Uh, I'm sharing my uh, Google uh, space. Could you see the page? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, fine. Now, uh, here in the Google search engine, simply we can type ICTV. Uh, then uh, it will take you to the uh, ICTV uh, official website, International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses. Now, there, if you just uh, click this uh, main uh, page, then it's having a lot of informations, uh, including earlier reports and uh, some books and uh, photographs of viruses that can be assessed. And they had a wonderful system of online assessing of taxonomy. Uh, 
So in this um, tax part, if you just click this taxonomy in this, uh, I said to be online, then uh, they will show you the entire classification, okay? So for our uh, easy understanding, we can simply uh, type here, uh, let it be what uh, the coronavirus is, okay? Coronavirus, uh, this family will, uh, sorry, it's corona, okay? Then it goes to that particular place, view. So it will take you to the uh, level of family coronavirus. So it's come in the suborder, order, classes. Uh, these are the different hierarchical uh, classification. But uh, suppose you're interested to search about the position of uh, the search COVID-2. Then the coronavirus family, they mentioned there are two subfamily. If you just click this, then there'll be a drop window. They will show two subfamily, Letovirini and Orthocoronavirini. We know that our virus is under this orthocoronavirini. Then just click the subfamily, you'll have four uh, genus. They are alpha, beta, delta, and gamma coronavirus. As we know that uh, our virus, it's a uh, beta coronavirus. And we'll try to see this five subgenera of beta coronavirus. If you click it, then a drop window will see, uh, so it the subgenus five subgenus under the beta coronavirus genus. So there, Embeco, Hibeco, Mebeco, Nobeco, and Sarbeco, these are the subgenus. And we know that our SARS virus is an Sarbeco subgenus. So if you click it, it's only one, as in it is the severe acute respiratory syndrome related coronavirus subgenus, Sarbeco, Sarbeco um, uh, subgenus under the genus beta coronavirus. So likewise, we can get go to the exit positions if you click the history then more information you can derive how it was derived from which uh, uh, classification system okay similarly if you talk about the MERS which is another closely related virus uh, so this is an uh, Marbeco um, under this uh, beta coronavirus where we can get Middle East respiratory syndrome related coronavirus this is from camel to the human, this occur in the Middle East. So likewise, all the viruses, their actual uh, nomenclature and their taxonomic position can be assessed. Anyone can assess it by going through this ICTV online website. This is a huge collection of viruses. It doesn't uh, restrict to um, human, doesn't restrict to the animal or even like plants and fungi, whatever the viruses are, they all are clumped together, including some sub viral agents also. So uh, throughout the globe, people uh, uh, follow the taxonomic classification put forward by International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses, okay? So if you get the laser time, you can go through this website for uh, clarifying some of your doubt. As because uh, almost in every two, three years, uh, we could get the new classifications and the changes in the name of viruses. So in our um, systematic study, we'll mention about those uh, names and conditions. Now coming to the, some of the DNA viruses of veterinary importance, uh, how the classification they put it, uh, like double-stranded DNA, non-segmented, and with envelope. These are the uh, double-stranded DNA viruses having envelope. Pox viridi, herpes viridi, S4 viridi. This African swine fever virus is an S4 viridi family. Uh, the genome size and this uh, symmetry and this uh, envelopes are present. So likewise, they are grouped together so that it is easier for us to uh, study the viruses. And we'll try to follow this uh, way in our systematic study. So pox, herpes, and as for herpes, uh, variety is one such family where it says that any creatures in this world, they have at least one uh, major herpes virus infection. So it's a very widely prevalent disease in uh, animals and humans and uh, a lot of herpes viruses uh, circulating into the population. The second category is again double-stranded DNA virus, non-segmented and non-enveloped. These are non-enveloped uh, DNA viruses like adenovirus, papillomavirus, polyomavirus. 
this papilloma and polioma are tumorogenic viral infections of uh, animal and human. So, um, adenoviruses are again uh, important for us. As you know, the present vaccine, Covicil vaccine, it is an adenovirus vector of the vaccines. But that's a different aspect, uh, how we can use this adenovirus as a vector. But we are having certain uh, very important disease causing uh, mass massive damages to the animal populations under this adenovirus family. We are going to discuss about it. And they are double-stranded DNA virus, non-segmented, non enveloped I hope that you will make a list of all this, uh, uh, what has been listed in the slides uh, and try to uh, go through it, the, the viruses under different categories. So these two uh, members, Circo and the Parvoviridae, they are interestingly single-stranded DNA viruses. This is uh, quite important for us, like um, all the DNA in nature, they are double-stranded, but these two viruses, the DNA are single-stranded, okay? And the circoviruses, they are having the circular genome in addition to that. So there is another category, it's Enelovirae recently classified as related to the circoviruses. So these are the example of single standard DNA viruses. Then our, our HEPA DNA virality family. So it's a, a double stranded DNA virus, uh, but uh, partly single stranded, partly double stranded, and they are having the reverse transcriptase enzyme. This virus also HEPA DNA viruses. So these are some of the members under the DNA family: pox, herpes, as far then adeno, papilloma, polyoma, circo, anello, parvo, and then HEPA DNA viruses. So we are going to discuss about this uh, family and important disease cause uh, member presence under this family. Then if you go to the RNA viruses, uh, then we'll get uh, the single-stranded RNA negative chains with and low, okay? And uh, some are segmented, some are non-segmented. If you see the segmented, then ARENA, then BUNIA, then orthomyxia viruses, they are segmented viruses, whereas uh, the BORUNA, PHILO, uh, PARAMYXIA, they are non-segmented viruses. And basically all of them, they are negative sense RNA viruses and having an block. okay? So the negative sense uh, RNA viruses that indicate that all these members, they must possess the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase enzyme. Similarly, the, uh, the positive sense RNA viruses, these are quite interesting in the sense like uh, many of the positive sense RNA viruses, the genome is infectious. That's a very, um, uh, I mean, uh, very, very peculiar features present in this group of viruses which you will never seen in any living organisms. For example, the piconoviruses. If you just extract the RNA of piconoviruses, just purified RNA from the virus, and that purified RNA somehow by injector or by certain chemical method, if you post in, inside a cell, and the new viruses will come out. So the RNA is infectious in nature, and they are the example of positive sense RNA viruses. So here we have this artery variety, uh, quite uh, important uh, family for us. Then corona variety, then flavi variety, toga, picorna, astro, calici. Uh, these are all non-segmented RNA viruses and all are having positive sense RNA. So one, two members, uh, important diseases under this family we're going to discuss in our subsequent classes. Then in the RNA viruses, uh, these two viruses, the bi RNA virality and rio virality, these two are the RNA viruses which are having double stranded, double stranded RNA. In nature, we you know like all RNA, they are single stranded, but these two members, they are having double stranded RNA. And uh, both of them are uh, segmented uh, genome. So by RNA variety having two segments and Rio having 10 to 12 different segments. So Rio variety includes the Rio Orbi Ruta Distri Zenas, uh, which possesses some important members for us. So we're going to discuss about it. Then uh, lastly, we categorize this retroviridae totally separate um, way because uh, 
they, they are the example of viruses having the diploid genome, means uh, two copies of each genes are present. And retroviruses, basically, although they are um, RNA virus, uh, but uh, uh, once they enter into the host cell, they convert it, the RNA into a double-stranded DNA and get integrated with the host cell as provirus. So they also possess the reverse transcriptase enzyme. From the word reverse transcriptase, the backward meaning is the retro, so a retrovirality family, okay? So these are the important viruses that we're going to study in our course, uh, important diseases. But there are some sub-viral agents. There are, again, certain sub-viral agents which doesn't uh, belonging to the category of viruses like uh, Virots, vi videos, satellites, and prions. It's, it's not virus, it's virusoid. It should be, okay, there is a mistake here. Satellite viruses and prions. Prions are again a different uh, category of uh, particles. So we're going to discuss about the prion diseases at the end, and there we'll discuss more about the nature of prions separately. Okay. Otherwise, it may be a confusion for you. Now, uh, one interesting uh, few slides I will share with you, like all these uh, names, the box of uh, from uh, since that 1939 onward, when the, um, the nomenclatures were given, uh, the same nomenclature still was uh, followed, and the, these family names are having certain uh, meaning. So, like the pox variety family, the word pox derived from the term pox, which means a pustular eruption. In the pox, we see some you know, vesicle formations in the body surfaces. That's called pustular eruptions. Some fluid filled uh, vesicles are developed, or commonly we call it a pox lesion. So, from that, the family name has been given because this pox virus they produces some pustular eruptions in the uh, body surfaces, skins. So similarly, the adenovirate, the adeno means the organs. So initially, when these adenoviruses were identified, they were identified and isolated from uh, certain uh, adenoids, uh, particularly in the memory glands of the human. And uh, they have given that since these viruses are uh, detected in the uh, glandular organ, they have given the name as adeno. Variety. Now also you can see some of the adenoviruses, they specifically affect liver infections, canine hepatitis, and uh, some like egg drop syndromes, virus uh, that in fact the infundibulum in the poultry. So they are more or less restricting to the organs, some glandular organs. So they have been given as the adenoviridae name. As far variety, this is a, a family which include only one uh, infectious as and it is the African swine fever virus. So uh, they have been given the name, the initials of African swine fever and related viruses. Uh, these things are quite commonly asked in the examinations, like what is the meaning of as far variety family? So it is the African swine fever and related virus. The initial has been taken and given the name of this as far variety family. This includes only one member for us. It's the African swine fever virus. As you know, presently it is creating a walk uh, in our country. Then the herpes variety. This, uh, the, the word herpes, it's a Greek word herpene, derived from the Greek word herpene. Herpene means uh, the creeping movement. Creeping is a very slow uh, um, movement uh, where people do not get any idea that anybody has entered into the rooms without making any sound. This called the creeping movement. This basically happened with the herpes virus infections. Whenever the herpes virus enter in our body, nobody knows about it. It slowly entered at any point and then progressively it will increase inside the body. And most of the time, the herpes viruses remain in the slip mode and the certain triggering factors will uh, flare up and uh, the explosive disease are formed. So uh, that's why this family, these members are termed as herpes virus, the slowly progressing disease is a characteristic of herpes viruses. So when they enter in a body, at what point, we don't know. Like uh, the virus may enter Today, um, to my body without putting any disease, after one year, two years, it can suddenly produce the disease. So it's called the creeping movement, herpes variety. Uh, 
Circo viridae, this is because of the circular genome. Circular genome. These are the two electron microscopic picture of circo virus genome. Small round viruses. They are the smallest uh, vertebrate viruses that we are going to discuss it. They are on the size of 17 to 22 nanometer. So circular conformations or circular genome is the meaning of circo viridae. Similarly, parvo viridi, parvas means small. Before identification of the circo viruses, people thought that this uh, picorna and the parvo are the smallest vertebrate virus because of their small size. So parvo viruses are almost size of 20 to 25 nanometer in size. So they have been given as uh, small viruses. Papilloma, this oma is a word uh, that indicates the tumor formation. So this group of viruses, they cause some papillomatous growth in the skins and mucous membrane. Um, because of uh, this nature, uh, you know, we call them as the, uh, and this group of viruses uh, has been placed in the papilloma viridae family. Uh, could you see my slide? Yes, yes sir. Okay, papilloma viridae. Then uh, coming to the RNA viruses, by RNA viridae, by means two, two again, okay? And the segmented genome, this virus is having two molecules, segmented genome. This is a segment A and this is segment B inside the nuclear capsid. Uh, please remember this by RNA viridae is not because of double-stranded RNA, it is because of two segment of the virus, bisegmented genome of the virus, myRNA viridae. Similarly, the Rio viridae is initials of this three word, respiratory, enteric, or fan. So initially, the members under the Rio viridae were isolated from uh, normal healthy individuals, orphans, means uh, doesn't having any disease conditions, particularly in the respiratory tract and uh, intestine. And they have the common properties of uh, uh, this um, uh, double-stranded RNA viruses have been segmented genome and has been grouped as the Rio variety. So this includes the Rio orbian rota tree important genus causing disease in uh, animals and humans. Okay, so the Rio meaning is the respiratory enteric orphan virus. So it was apparently healthy humans initially. It was isolated. That's why it is called as the orphan virus. Then uh, important members, para mikjo viridae, para mikjo, you know, the para clinical, side by the clinical, this uh, microbiology, pathology, uh, parasitology, these are para clinical subjects. So we assist the clinical department in giving diagnosis and treatments, okay? So similarly here also the concept comes, para mikjo, para means side by, mikjo means mucous membrane. So this group of viruses basically you'll find they will cause a submucosal infection. So not directly into the mucous epithelium, rather the subepithelium spaces, this virus infections uh, causes severe inflammatory reactions. And that's why they are called as paramyxoviruses. viruses. We have a lot of important diseases on the paramyxoviruses viruses that we're going to discuss, like the Newcastle disease, canine distemper, window pace, PPR. So mm, those are, are under the paramyxoviridae family. So infection adjacent to the mucous memory. Then a member calls the rhabdo viridae. Rhabdo, the meaning, the, uh, the Greek word rhabdas, which means rod or bullet sepe. This virus is popularly described it as a bullet sepe. Does it not look like some bullets, uh, some point uh, um, uh, the pistol bullets, just like this is the arrangement, uh, helical nuclear capsid arrangement of the virus uh, and the rhabdoviridae, that's why they're called as uh, the rod sepe uh, or bullet sepe viruses. Rhabdoviridae. This includes the, the, uh, the, the lysa virus that causes rabies in uh, animals the human. Then uh, another infection called as the Borona variety. It is again um, against the name of uh, uh, an outbreak that occurred in 1885 in horses uh, near uh, Saxony, Germany. So Borona is the city. That's why the name has been given as the Borona. Similarly, there is a Bunia, uh, Bunia variety. Bunia Mwara is a place in Uganda. 
and that uh, group of viruses still termed as uh, the Bunia virality family. So these are some of the uh, nomenclatures and names that uh, has been followed from uh, earlier classification and still it is persisting. Ortho mixo virality. So uh, that depends on the tissue infection. Ortho means true. Mixo means mucous membrane. This ortho mixo virality that includes the influenza A, B, and C. This influenza viruses they truly cause infections in the mucosal epithelium. So they grow and multiply in the epithelial surface, in the respiratory intestinal tract, and they cause a severe damage. Ortho means true. Para means side by. So this is a difference between ortho mixo viridi and para mixo viridi. Para mixo, the infections occur in the subepithelium, but in the ortho mixo viridi, the infections that occur in the epithelial surface. Now come to this corona viridi family. Corona uh, meaning the crown. Uh, as this group of envelope viruses having very prominent plough-sepid glycoprotein projections, these are some of the coronavirus electron microscopic uh, pictures where we could see some um, projections on the envelope. These are very prominent clubsepid glycoprotein projections. And because of which uh, somebody had described it as a um, crown of a king, uh, and uh, has been the name has been given as the corona variety because of this uh, clubsepid peplomer present on its uh, surface. This is the spike proteins that uh, uh, we could see in the coronavirus uh, picture. Then uh, another group, this is a very recently identified uh, virus group, RTD viridae. In 1996, uh, first uh, time this particular family of viruses were identified. Um, of course, the equine viral arteritis is a condition which was uh, uh, recorded a long time back, but people could not find out uh, in which classifications uh, this virus will come and later on with uh, lactate dehydrogenase elevating virus of rodent and the pars virus of pig, which is creating again uh, the havoc in our country, the PRS infection. So together, this uh, uh, viruses has been grouped on the artery virality. It causes arteritis, inflammation of the veins and hemorrhages occur. Pico RNA virality. Pico means small RNA viruses. So pico RNA viruses that include the human polio virus, then foot and mouth disease virus of uh, cloven footed animals, uh, important members. Of course, many other uh, diseases are there in human and animal. So they are named because they are small viruses, around 25 nanometer in size. They are non-enveloped eicosahedral symmetry, very simple kind of virus, pico RNA viruses. So pico means small RNA virus. Then comes to another, it's called as the calice variety. It causes very fatal infection in uh, uh, cat species. So they possess some uh, cup or goblets uh, cup on its surface. As you can see in the electron microscope, some depressed cups of its structures on its uh, envelope. And that's why it is called as the Calici variety. Then toga. Toga means uh, in the Latin form, it's a um, clock, toga variety. Toga meaning is clock. So uh, the electron microscopic views look like some clock face, just like the clock face. Uh, and uh, that's why they have been named as Toga VDD. So uh, it's uh, the <coughs> then uh, lastly, it's the Flavi variety. Flavi variety includes some of the important diseases like uh, classical swine fever virus, then dengue, uh, then Japanese encephalitis. Uh, these are important members of Flavi variety. So the first identified virus is the yellow fever virus of human. It was a very fatal. Uh, uh, systemic infections uh, caused by the yellow fever virus because uh, in that yellow fever the jaundice was the frequent outcome that's why uh, the name has been given as the flavi variety flavus means yellow okay so this include the uh, uh, pasty viruses this pasty viruses causes uh, classical swine fever infections in uh, pigs then coming to the retro variety, many times I repeat it, retros means uh, the backward of the reverse, okay? So the Latin is a backward, the reverse transcriptase, because uh, with the help of these enzymes uh, from uh, 
uh, RNA molecules, uh, DNA molecule is synthesized. It's in a backward way the transcriptions occur. So using the reverse transcriptase enzyme. So RE, TR has been grouped together as the retroviridae family, okay? So this includes the slantivirus, uh, then spumovirus, the important members. So these are some of the um, name of the families uh, with their meaning. So um, try to remember uh, the name of uh, important members as part of the classifications and uh, how they are uh, groups and then uh, the meaning of this uh, family is important for us. So this is about this uh, classification in nomenclature of viruses. So the criteria for classifications, please uh, uh, try to remember uh, what are the um, criteria we considered for classification of viruses. So this was uh, what I prepared for today's class. And um, today again in the afternoon, two o'clock, I'm going to continue with the next chapter on virus replication. This is uh, uh, quite important uh, things that you must uh, attend all of you. And if any doubt on it, I hope uh, all of you have uh, kept a record on it and uh, please note it down in your notebook and try to remember the name of these individual families and their uh, meaning so what we discuss. So in this particular session, uh, before going for the session, I'm just sharing my uh, screen. Uh, can uh, everyone can see my slide? Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, can you see uh, the slide? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm putting it in the uh, full screen mode. Can you see the slide now? Yes, sir, it's visible. Uh, what is written there? Virus replication. <laughs> Virus replication, good. Okay. Uh, might be having a lot many classes from morning onward. Um, till uh, keeping your uh, mind uh, fresh, uh, try to uh, understand uh, the replication of virus, uh, the different stages of replication. This is uh, the most basic thing every one of you must uh, understand. And uh, uh, if there is any uh, doubt or any queries, uh, please let me know. Uh, you can send your queries and doubt uh, so that I can address in the subsequent class. Now uh, also you can, uh, we can interact and we can discuss. So morning it was uh, more than 50 students, now it is 44, uh, still waiting to join by a few of your friends. Well, uh, uh, in this initial few classes, uh, about our understanding about the viruses, uh, I guess all of you uh, could uh, able to uh, <coughs> remember the nature of a virus. And uh, all the time, what we mention is that uh, this uh, virus is uh, the most simplest form, and we call it a virus particle. It's a, a simple nucleic acid, either DNA or RNA is covered with a protein coat called as capsids and the nucleic acid structure is the most simplest form of the virus uh, that we are going to discuss where um, some uh, viruses, some other viruses, they additionally acquire an uh, envelope layer from the host cells where they replicate them while they come out of the host cells, they acquire that one from the host cells and we call them as the envelope viruses. So the nucleic acid is further protected with the envelope uh, layer. And this envelope membrane is uh, derived from the host cell during replication. However, that the envelope layer uh, encored with some proteins and glycoproteins, which are of virus origin. Uh, whom we frequently call it as a uh, spike protein or peplomers, uh, which are very, very essential for existence of the virus. So uh, 
there we mentioned about the properties of virus that uh, they do not have any metabolic activity so they in fact do not have any organelles unlike the bacteria or higher uh, plants and animals and the fungi so uh, they, they, they totally depend on the host cells rather i should use the word as a virus uh, can sabotage a host cells and can utilize the host cell machinery for their own synthesis so uh, without the living cells a virus cannot uh, replicate okay so outside the host cell living cells the virus cannot uh, replicate because they don't have their machinery for synthesis they totally depend on a host cell uh, for uh, completing its uh, replication phases and new virus particles are produced in that process so this uh, uh, as such we call the virus replication so in a very simple way we'll try to remember the stages of uh, virus replications and different stages of virus replication of course um, we will be uh, taking a, a very brief and general idea about the viruses however depending on the different um, uh, nature of the viruses the replication varies so although basically all of them they follow the common replication stages so as a general discussions we'll talk about the different stages of virus uh, replication so uh, while we discuss about the replication of uh, viruses uh, just like the, in case of the bacteria um, the, 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 the growth and replication of bacteria are expressed in terms of the growth curve so here also for the viruses uh, the, 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 the different stages of replication the time it uh, take the, by the virus uh, to complete these replications can be plotted in a uh, graphical representations and then we get a kind of a growth curve called as one stiff growth curve unlike that uh, uh, the bacterial growth curve where we could see the um, lag phase log phase exponential and data decline phase here the graph is more or less a one step growth curve why I'm focusing this one is that uh, this is uh, calculated by inoculating some virus material into an um, live cell system. And then after uh, a few periods of time, the viruses, they declined. As you could see it here, suppose this is some marking of uh, cells, uh, just considered it as a say 1,000 or 2,000 number of virus particles. If you inoculate, after uh, a definite period of time, the virus's uh, number will decline and there will be basically no visible virus you can see in that uh, uh, medium. Till a point where a new virus particle will start uh, appearing. This particular stage is called as the virus eclipse. So we need to understand it. Uh, that in the eclipse phase of virus replication, the actual uh, the genomic replication and new virus formation takes place. So we'll try to uh, discuss about this uh, stages in the subsequent slides. Okay. So uh, if you want to review it, the, the different stages of virus replication, then uh, we can discuss it in terms of these five different stages of. Uh, virus replication okay so always it is started with the first stage is called as the attachment or adsorption attachment or adsorption is the first phase of virus replication this is a very um, uh, critical stage and uh, crucial stage in the virus replication then before uh, entering to the host cell a virus must must be able to attached to its cell surface okay so once it get attached and adsorbed uh, into the cytoplasmic membrane of the host cell the virus can initiate its replication so this is a very important uh, uh, stages of virus replications we call it the attachment okay we'll come to uh, more in details about this attachment and um, before uh, initiating its replication a virus must must be able to attach to its memory so that it can initiate uh, the infections okay so uh, 
once the virus get attached to uh, a cell surface, then it crosses the membrane, so set up as a membrane of the host cells, what we call as the penetrations. They penetrate to the cytosol of the host cells, okay? After attachment and adsorption, they will penetrate. And during this penetration process, the virus uncoating takes place, right? This is the second stage of virus replication. So uncoating refers to the um, release of the nucleic acids from the nucleic acid structure of the virus, okay? So both this penetration and uncoating are discussed together as because there is no any sort of demarcation between these two processes of virus replication. So first they will attach and job to the surface and then they will penetrate, the, uh, they will cross the membrane and come to the cytosols and where the uncoating will take place and the nucleic acid will get released. Now, once the uncoating will take place and the nucleic acid will be released, virtually you cannot see any virus particle inside the host cell. That is why if you just try to correlate with one step growth curve here, you inoculate a definite number of virus particle and after a few uh, periods of time, so maybe the minutes or hours, uh, you'll find that the, the, the virus will simply vanish, they will disappear. The number will come down and they will disappear to a certain point and then again the new virus particle will come out. This particular phase is called as eclipse phase, the third stages of virus replication. Eclipse simply they vanishes the virus. It was initially there in the attachment, you can see. After penetration, also you can see the virus particle, but once the uncoating takes place, only the nucleic acids will be available inside the host cell. And there simply the viruses they disappear, what we call, and this is the beginning of eclipse phase. This eclipse phase of virus replication is the actual synthesis phase where the virus will utilize the host cell machinery to uh, utilize for their own use and new virus particle will start produce. Like in terms of viral nucleic acid replication, in terms of the viral protein synthesis, everything will take place in this third stage of virus replication, what we call as the eclipse phase or virus synthesis okay the meaning of eclipse is simply disappearing disappearance of the virus from the cell okay this is not like disappearing it is only the uncoating and you cannot see the uh, intact virus particle this word will be more appropriate at the beginning of this at the end of uncoating you cannot see the intact virus in the cells rather only the nucleic acid will be available and utilizing this nucleic acids, the new virus synthesis will take place inside the host cell. This is a very peculiar phenomenon that we could see. No life system, you can see it's such kind of athlete's phase. So it's happened only with the viruses. So this third stage of virus replication is the actual virus synthesis stage. Towards the end of this virus synthesis, you will see um, uh, thousands of copies of virus nucleic acid will be available, then um, thousands of copies of uh, virus capsid proteins and glycoproteins, everything will be uh, available inside the host cell. Then it is the beginning of assembly. All these particles will again reassemble inside the uh, cell, host cell, and then a new virus particle will appear. That is the end of eclipse phase. Uncoating is the beginning of uh, eclipse phase and assembly is the end of eclipse phase, okay? So new virus particle will assemble. So from uh, uh, one virus will enter and infect the host cells, then thousands of virus particles will be produced uh, inside the host cells. So once this assembly will be completed, these are very organized systems, how the virus get assembled inside the host cell. And after the assembly, they will come out of the host cell. This is what we call as the release. So that a new infectious virus particle we call as the virion. The infectious virus particle is called as virion. So the virions will be 
release of the host cells. So in total, these are the five different stages of virus replication. Let us try to see a schematic diagram out here. There is, this is an example of uh, a DNA virus uh, which um, uh, replicates uh, in the nucleus of the infected host cell, okay? Suppose this is then a uh, host cell. The first stage is the uh, attachment. Could you see here the virus will attach? This is an example of an uh, icosahedral DNA virus having envelope. So, this is the example of herpes virus. Herpes virus. Today morning itself, we discuss it. Herpes virus family. Uh, can anybody remember the meaning of herpes? Anyone? Great. Creeping, yeah, good. Creeping, slow and uh, progressive type of uh, infection. This herpes virus is produced very good. Um, they, this herpes, uh, the meaning is the creeping movement, slow movement. Um, when the herpes virus enter inside our body, we don't know when it will enter, and uh, we may not suffer from infection immediately. So gradually, after a few time, maybe one month, two months, or after one year, we may develop this infection. So that's why it's called the creeping movement. Very good. So this is an example of uh, DNA virus, which are having envelope. Okay. So I could have a symmetry. So they will first attach to the host cell. Host cell. This is the call of the stage of attachment. We'll discuss more about it uh, gradually. So once it will get attached, this is the prime uh, need of the virus. Without attachment, a virus straightway cannot pounce and bump it and goes inside the host cells. Not at all possible, right? So it has to be attached to the cell surface to certain uh, specific proteins called as the receptor. Receptor um, molecules, it will attach and they will bind. So this is the first stage of virus replication. It is quite interesting why we see that uh, uh, there are certain viruses which in fact only one kind of species, not the other species. So we can explain it. Probably they don't have the specific receptor for attachment to the other host cells. So the present situation again, this is some things like uh, from uh, uh, the, 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 the SARS to uh, this COVID-19 virus. Uh, somehow it get adapted to the human uh, cells and we are providing a receptor for it. Uh, it's called as the uh, AAAAC2 -A 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 receptors will come in certain uh, slides uh, afterwards. So first stage is the attachment, okay? So once it will get attached, then this will trigger some of the activities takes place in the, just below the membrane and that will help in uh, pulling the virus particle inside the host cells. This is what we call as the penetration. Penetration means crossing the membrane. Once it will be attached, then they will cross the membrane. This is what we call as the penetration. Penetration. And once the virus get penetrated inside the host cell, uh, then the next is which occurs simultaneously, penetration and uncoating. Uncoating refers to uh, breaking of the nucleocapsid structures and the nucleic acid will get released. Okay, this is called as the uncoating. Okay, now de depending on the type of viruses, uh, the Later on, we'll discuss that uh, there are different methods the virus families they will adopt for attachment, different methods for penetrations and uncoating. So, a lot of variations we can see among the viruses uh, in this process of attachment, penetration, and uncoating. But basically, uh, in today's sessions, you need to understand the, broadly the all the five different stages of virus replication. First stage is attachment, and after attachment, the second stage is penetration and uncoating. If you uh, minutely observe this particular uh, diagrams, then you'll find till this stage, till the uncoating takes place, you could see the intact virus particle. But once the this capsid layer get dissolved and the nucleic acid will be released, there is no traces of virus particle. 
we call it as a beginning of eclipse phase. The viruses initially it was here, but they disappeared from this particular point till the new virus particle again assembled at this. So this is the beginning of eclipse phase and this is the end of eclipse phase. So this is the actual stage where the virus synthesis takes place, okay? So again, I'm repeating, the first is the attachment uh, stage. Then second stage is the penetration and uncoating. Penetration means crossing the membrane and uncoating means release of the nucleic acid inside the host cells. Now in any other life system, these things never happen. The, 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 the organisms are never get dissolved and the nucleic acid will be released, never happen. But this is very common and this is the process they replicate inside a host cell, okay? So once this nucleic acid will get dissolved, the nucleic acid will be released. Then, depending on the type of viruses, uh, they will uh, choose their area locations for replication. Now here, we could see a lot of uh, diversity among the viruses. The most general concept is that the, the DNA viruses, DNA viruses, they prefer to replicate inside the nucleus of the host cell. The DNA viruses, they prefer to grow inside the nucleus of the host cell. However, the RNA group of viruses, they prefer to grow in the cytoplasm of the host cell. This is a very general concept and usually happen with the majority of this DNA and RNA virus with certain exceptions. There are certain exceptions where you will find there are some DNA viruses like uh, pox viruses, it's a DNA virus, but it can replicate in the cytoplasm, not in the nucleus. The same is the case of the influenza viruses. It's an RNA virus which are supposed to grow in the cytoplasm, but they prefer to grow in the nucleus. All are depend on the transcription factor provided by the host cell to complete this replication. Because once this uh, uncoating takes place, this nucleic acid is totally depend on the host cell machinery for their synthesis. That's my point. So we say that the viruses, they after entry to the host cells, they uh, hijack, rather I should use the word hijack the host cell machinery for their own synthesis. Like in this case, it's, 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 it's what it's speaking is that the, the, the nucleic acids, uh, they migrate to the nucleus and utilizing the uh, nuclear enzymes. We know the DNA dependent RNA polymerase, the RNA, messenger RNA are formed. Now we can explain why DNA virus prefer to grow in the nucleus because inside the nucleus, they will get the host cell enzyme, DNA dependent RNA polymerase, which is abundantly available inside the nucleus of the host cell, which is absent in the cytoplasm. So <clears throat> DNA viruses, they, the nucleic acid migrate to the nucleus and where they use the host cell DNA dependent RNA polymerase and the messenger RNA transcription takes place. And you know this messenger RNA will carry the genetic information of the virus, bring it to the cytoplasms where on the surface of ribosome, these are the host cell ribosomes because the viruses do not have any organelles. So they will utilize this host cell ribosome for protein synthesis. All the enzymes needed for protein synthesis will be utilized from the host cell and the proteins will be synthesized, okay? So likewise, after entry into the host cell, the virus nuclear acids will utilize most of the host cell function for its own synthesis. This way, they will go, we'll explain this uh, separately in the subsequent slides. At the end of this eclipse phase, you'll find utilizing the host cell enzyme systems, many copy of the virus uh, uh, nucleic acid will be formed. Then many uh, capsid proteins will be formed. And then when this uh, stage will be completed, the replication phase, uh, the eclipse phase, 
this proteins, capsid protein will self-aggregate in the location and they will give rise to an icosahedral symmetry as in this case. If it is a helical, then they will give rise to an helical symmetry. And one one copy of the nucleic acids, they will accommodate inside the nuclear capsid. And this particular stage is called as the, this is the fourth stage of virus replication called as the assembly, okay? Again, I'm repeating, the first stage is the attachment. Second is the penetrations and uncoating. Then third stage is the viral synthesis or eclipse phase, where no virus particles you could see, but the vital nucleic acids will exert its function, utilizing the, uh, the most of the host cell enzymes, and then new virus particles will start assemble at the end of this stage. So this is called as the assembly. And finally, a measured virus particle will form, okay, as it has been shown in this particular figure. So once the virus particle will be formed within this host cell, in this diagram, only one virus particle has been shown, but it's not like that. One virus, you can see thousands of virus particles will form inside the host cell. Then it is the time to come out of the host cell. And we call that last days of virus replication as the release, release out of the host cell. They will enter it, they will synthesize a new virus particle will form, and they will come out of the host cell. So depending on the viruses, this process of release are uh, different. Okay? Some viruses, they simply cause lysis of the host cells and uh, mature virus particle will simply come by bursting the host cell. However, there are certain viruses where instead of lysis of the host cells, they can fuse to the membrane and come out gradually from the host cell without much affecting or damaging the host cell. However, in this case, of course, these herpes viruses can cause total damage of the host cell. And as you could see, this is an envelope virus. Have you seen? This is the virus having an envelope layer. So at the end of its replications, when the nucleic acid structure will form, they will carry some part of the nuclear membrane as it has been seen it here. And this nuclear membrane, they will carry it as an envelope. That is why right from the beginning, whenever I say that envelope, this envelope, they simply acquire it from the host cell during replication, okay? So they are not coded by the virus uh, genome. So simply, physically, they will carry this uh, envelope. Here, it is a nuclear membrane as an envelope. And through certain channel, they will gradually come out. And this is another infectious virus particle or virion, okay? This stage is called as the release. So the five stages of virus replication, what we mentioned is attachment or adsorption, penetration, uncoating, viral synthesis or eclipse, virion assembly and release. These are the five stages of virus replication. Attachment, penetration and coating. This is the eclipse phase or virus synthesis, then assembly and finally release. I guess in some idea you're getting it. So now we'll go a little bit uh, more deeper to this uh, each and every stages of virus replication. The first stage, as we say, it's uh, attachment. Please note it down. Attachment is always through specific receptor. Okay, attachment process is always through specific receptors. So receptors are some uh, protein molecules that are present on the surface of the host cell. They had some uh, sort of a uh, binding property with the viral proteins, or in other way we can say that. The virus protein, either it's a capsid protein or it may be an envelope like a protein, they can bind to the uh, specific cell uh, surface molecules of the host. We call it as a receptor. Okay. Uh, now, this attachment is not an uh, arbitrary um, uh, binding. It is always through uh, certain specific receptors. 
So all of our body cells is having certain proteins and virus utilizes those protein to get passage to the host cell. And it is only because of the evolutionary process they get adapted in that way, okay? For example, CD4, CD4, cluster of differentiation four, you have studied in the immunology, are used, these signaling molecules are used by certain viruses to attach to the host cell. Now, if I say that this particular virus, in fact, only poultry, no other animals or humans get affected, we can say that the poultry cells provide a receptor for this particular virus so that they can infect you. More precisely, again, you can concentrate that this particular virus, a particular virus, they infect the hepatocytes. The, the meaning is that the, the liver cells is expressing those receptors for the virus. As a result, the virus is specifically affecting the liver. So likewise, why we don't suffer from infections of any, um, any other virus um, uh, particles? Suppose the pig viruses, why we do not suffer? The African swine fever is going on in Mizoram these days and, and the northeastern state. Now, it doesn't affect the human. That means the human doesn't provide a receptor for African swine fever virus. Even it provides certain receptors, but the virus doesn't get a suitable environment, the transcription factor to replicate inside the human cell. Probably that is the reasons why humans are not affected. So by knowing the biology of a, a virus replication, it can be explained why it specifically affects a uh, particular species of animal. However, there are certain viruses which are not specific to one species, rather they can affect more than one species. For example, it's very common with the influenza group of viruses. So these influenza viruses, they use oxalic acid as a receptor site. And we know that the salic acids are abundantly present in the cell surface of many species of animal. So what happened? The influenza viruses can affect many species together. At present, what we are uh, concerned about the SARS-CoV-2 virus, it utilizes a, a receptor called as ACE, you know, receptor. So angiotensin converting enzyme. Angiotensin uh, is a molecule that uh, regulates our blood pressure. So this angiotensin <coughs> converting enzyme two, uh, which is essentially needed for uh, production of angiotensin, active angiotensin inside our body, is utilized by the SARS-CoV-2 virus for attachment, okay? So uh, uh, if you try to grow the virus in a cell which doesn't have ACE2, probably the virus will never grow. That is why we can see that the SARS-CoV-2 is affecting uh, say, the bat and the human, probably the feline species, because we get some information about the uh, felines affected by this uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus. So maybe this group of animal there have been the common uh, proteins on the cell surface, so that are utilized by the virus for its replication. However, when we talk about the influenza viruses, you will find influenza viruses affect uh, poultry, it affect pig, it affect horse, human, all, all animal species because they are having the common salic acid receptor. Similarly, some viruses, they are utilizing the ICAM-1, intracellular adhesin molecule 1 as a um, uh, receptor sites for its binding, in, in, integrins, glycoconjugate, etc., etc. I understand it is not possible for all these examples, but uh, some of it you can remember. This is a case of HIV virus, uh, which utilizes the CD4 molecule, CD4 and CCR5. These are uh, the cell surface uh, uh, molecules which are utilized by the HIV virus glycoproteins and very nicely they can bind with it and the CXCR4 
or colors GP41 can act as a uh, co receptors and this complex can uh, stabilize the virus on the surface of the host cell. So this receptor binding is essential for establishment of infection. So attachment is always associated with receptors and uh, presence and absence of receptor will tell whether the virus infections will be there or not. Okay. And this is a um, fantastic uh, locations which we can block it uh, to do, to get rid of virus infection. There are certain antivirals which can block this receptor before the virus binds with it and we can get rid of the virus infection. So these are some of the targets of antiviral drugs, okay? But remember, a virus have to bind with the receptor to initiate the uh, replication. So this is again the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 uh, on the surface of the cell membrane and that becomes the receptor for <coughs> the SARS-CoV-2, okay? Um, some people thought about uh, producing some antibody against this ACE2 so that the antibody will bind with the receptor and virus will not get any scope to bind with it. It happened in uh, the uh, protection uh, mechanisms against SARS-CoV-2. And this implies why we should take the vaccine so that we can prevent the virus attachment and the whole process will be nullified, okay? So, <clears throat> Uh, receptor binding. This is another case of the picorna viruses uh, where they will bind uh, uh, to the cellular receptor at certain specific locations and to certain host and then uh, they can establish the infection. So what we learn is that the first stage of virus replication, that means the attachment is always through certain specific receptor present in the cell surface. So in the evolutionary process, the viruses get adopted to a species by utilizing some of the specific uh, protein, cell surface protein as a receptor molecule. Okay, so uh, there are certain viruses which are very, very specific for the receptor. However, there are certain viruses which can um, have some common uh, receptors uh, and can affect more than one species, okay? So this uh, binding, receptor binding, uh, initiates the uh, virus replication. So <clears throat> once this binding takes place, when the virus uh, becomes stable in the surface of the cell, the next stage is that that binding, receptor binding uh, on its surface can trigger some of the signaling pathway uh, within the uh, host cell. And that give rise to the, the, the entry passes of the virus to the cytoplasm of the host cell. So this is the second stage of virus replication, penetration and uncoating, okay? So the penetration refer to crossing the uh, cytoplasmic membrane to the uh, cytoplasm of the host cell. So this uh, again, uh, this events uh, initiated from uh, the binding of the virus to the host cell uh, surface. So uh, when the virus will bind to the specific receptor, then some sort of enzymatic activity initiate within the host cell. And that gives rise to a process uh, through which in a very simple way, we can say that the virus particle will be pulled inside the uh, host cell cytoplasm, okay? So this process of penetration of the virus across the plasma membrane is termed as receptor-mediated endocytosis or receptor-mediated endocytic pathway of infection, okay? So uh, the specific receptor bindings will initiate, the binding will initiate this uh, process of endocytosis. The meaning of endocytosis is that the, the virus particle will uh, uh, be carried inside the uh, cytoplasm of the host cell. Uh, suppose this is a cytoplasmic membrane and these are the external virus particles. When they bind with the specific receptors, <coughs> here the example is the integrin receptors, they are binding on the host cells. So this binding triggers certain activities where you can see some of the clatrin protein. This is called as the clatrin-mediated endocytosis. This uh, proteins get accumulated 
And finally, it will help in bringing the virus particle within an endosome. This is called as the endosomes to the cytoplasm, okay? This process of bringing the virus particle to the cytoplasm of the host cell within our vesicles, what we call as the endosome, is assisted by certain specific protein. Here it is called as the clactrin coated pits, are the specific sites through which the, the viruses get endocytosis. So this is what we call as the receptor mediated endocytosis. So here it is another process where uh, instead of this clactrin, uh, caveolin uh, proteins take part in case of certain viruses, uh, where they will produce a caveoli and finally the virus particle will be bring inside to the cytoplasm. Okay, so these are the different different process through which the receptor mediated endocytosis occur. That's referred to the penetration. However. Uh, there are certain viruses where uh, the viruses binding to the receptors will not <coughs> trigger to bringing the virus particle to the uh, cytoplasm of the host cells. Rather, there will be the fusion of the membrane, the virus membrane and the uh, <coughs> cytoplasmic membrane. And without uh, producing this kind of endosomes, the virus can straightway come inside the host cell. Even in case of the picona viruses, if I straightway go, uh, oh, sorry, it's not this side. If I go to this particular uh, diagram, then you can see the, the binding of the virus particles to the <coughs> plasma membrane through the receptors will give rise to formation of a channel and then through that particular channel the nucleic acids of the virus will come inside the cytoplasm. So it all depend on the type of the viruses and their replication strategy and which pathway and how they will enter inside the host cell. Okay. So another here but we can see is that uh, the process of endocytosis where uh, this uh, uh, areas through which the endosomes will form <coughs> some of the endosomes uh, which are um, dependent on the changes of ph and this ph alterations will help in uh, dissolving the uh, capsid layer of the host cells and the nucleic acid will get uh, released okay so these endosomes will bring this uh, virus particle to deeper inside the uh, host cells. Now, again, I'm telling you, like uh, the viruses, which uh, <clears throat> like the DNA virus in general, when they uh, entered, uh, they, they, they will straightway direct to the nucleus of the host cells. And this endocytic pathway helps the virus to come near to the nucleus so that it can initiate its replication process okay however the rna virus is the uh, uncoating that takes place in the cytoplasm so there are certain process where uh, it is dependent on the ph and ph dependent and independent pathway through which uh, the virus uh, the encapsulation takes place and the nucleic acid get released inside the host cell this is what we call as the uh, penetration and uncoating. In this uh, pictures, what you can see is that uh, the different methods uh, adopted by the viruses uh, <coughs> through which they can cross the membrane, like uh, clactrin mediated endocytosis, caviolar, lipid trapped, uh, non clactrin, non caviolin process, uh, and this is a macrophenocytosis where the binding of the virus particle to the cell surface. Uh, uh, leads to formation of uh, some pseudopods and they gradually bring this virus particle to the cytoplasm, okay? So this is another uh, process where we could see that uh, the binding to the virus to the cell surface <coughs> will um, activate an uh, accumulation, they will increase the accumulation of clactin proteins uh, uh, in the subsurface of this endosomal um, uh, vesicles and then finally it will be endocytose okay once it will get endocytose then the process of uncoating 
takes place. So I'm repeating, the uncoating means the uh, release of the nucleic acid from the nucleocapsid structure, okay? So uh, finally, this uh, inside this endosomes, this uh, free in the <coughs> cytoplasms or they will migrate to the nucleus where they will initiate the uh, replication or virus synthesis process, okay? So, um, many ways to swing about this uh, clavulin or lipid trap, how it can bring it in endocytos inside the host cells. And this is a um, uh, transmission electron microscopic pictures of uh, showing these two stages, the real pictures of infected cells, where you can see this is a um, uh, cell surface where uh, the virus is getting endocytos to, through this area, and finally it is in, within the endosomes. Okay, here in this case, you can see a uh, lot many virus particles uh, <coughs> within one uh, big uh, uh, endosomes where the encapsidation will take place. Okay, so this uh, encapsidation of the virus is. Uh, 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 taken place by uh, um, the changes of the pH within these uh, endosomes, and then uh, that will increase the um, encapsidation process, or uh, rather I should say, this uh, uh, changes of the pH can activate the, and uh, um, disintegrate the, uh, the, the capsid layer, outer protective layer, and the nucleic acids uh, get uh, released from the endosomes and the uh, acyclic uh, space starts, okay? So in the pH independent uh, process, uh, like uh, uh, simply the fusions of the glycoproteins, the acid the penetrations and uh, release of the nucleic acids inside the cytoplasm. And uh, uh, the cellular uh, proteins, some of the cellular proteins might be the actin uh, filaments also assist in uh, migrations of this uh, nucleic acids uh, to the what we call as the tap protein or transport associated proteins will carry this nucleic acid to the nucleus for initiation of replication. Okay, so these are the two stages of virus uh, penetration and uh, uncoating. So once the virus get uh, uncoated, then the actual uh, synthesis, uh, virus synthesis takes place. And that is the beginning of uh, a cleaves phase, okay? So <clears throat> in this cleaves phase, uh, when the virus nucleic acids will be released into the host cell, depending on the type of the nucleic acids, and therefore the DNA and the RNA viruses, the processes are different, as I told you, the DNA viruses, except the pox virus, they, uh, they, they, they grow and multiply in the uh, nucleus of the infected host cells, whereas the RNA virus in general, with the exceptions of the um, influenza viruses or autonomic viruses, they replicate in the uh, nucleus of the host cell. So inside the host cells, uh, first thing is that uh, transcriptions of messenger RNA takes place, okay? So once the transcription takes place, uh, uh, let us refer to this particular uh, diagram once again. This viral nucleic acid, as it is an example of herpes virus, they will migrate to the nucleus and in the nucleus, utilizing the host cell uh, enzymes, <coughs> the DNA dependent RNA polymerase, the first set of messenger RNA are produced. This is the initial messenger RNA, okay? We call them as the early messenger RNA, okay? There are certain viruses where we can get again the immediate early or early messenger RNA, but for the time being, try to remember that uh, once the virus nucleic acid, <coughs> they reach the nucleus, in case of the DNA viruses, they produce the first set of messenger RNA. Can you see this messenger RNA? Anyone? Could you see this messenger RNA here? This diagram is clear to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So if you had any queries or any doubt, uh, please you can interpret inter interrupt me and can ask question. So 
the process of forming the messenger RNA from the DNA, mm -hmm. we call this stage as the transcription. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so uh, the, the first set of messenger RNA, we call them as the early messenger RNA of synthesize. This early messenger RNA will carry the genetic code of the virus nucleic acid and will migrate to the cytoplasm on the surface of the ribosome. They will go for translations of the first set of protein. These are all viral proteins. So these viral proteins will be synthesized on the surface of the ribosome, utilizing the host cell uh, system, ribosomal enzymes, everything they utilize it and they produce the first set of protein we call them as the early proteins we call them as the early proteins this early proteins are all the viral proteins okay early messenger rna will give rise to the early protein these early proteins are mostly the enzymes they needed the virus they needed for genomic replications and subsequent uh, transcriptions of messenger rna <coughs> So, the early protein, the nature of the early protein is that they are enzymes, viral enzymes. They need it for further virus genomic replications and synthesis of um, subsequent transcriptions. Okay. Uh, some of these uh, early proteins again help in shutdown of the host cell function. They want the virus doesn't want that the host cell should. Uh, function properly until and unless the host cell functions are uh, will be lowered down the virus cannot utilize this uh, system for their own synthesis so the main functions of the early proteins is they act as an enzyme for virus virus replication they also can suppress the host cell function so that they can utilize the host cell machinery efficiently even some of these early proteins even help the virus for further propagations. So, utilizing these early proteins, again, the virus genomic replication will take place from the uh, genomic copy available here, utilizing the different enzymes, including the, this time the viral enzyme, which is the uh, DNA dependent RNA polymerase enzyme. So, many copies of the genomic viral DNA will form. Okay, thousands of copies will be formed. And from these copies, again, utilizing the enzymes early as an early protein, the second set of messenger RNA will produce. This is the second set of messenger RNA. We call them as lip messenger RNA. Why we call it as a lip messenger RNA? Because this is the timing. This is the produced at the initial stage of virus replication, and this is towards the later stage of virus replication. <coughs> so the second set of transcriptions takes place and that gives rise to a second set of messenger RNA. We call them as the late messenger RNA. This late messenger RNA will again come to the cytoplasms and will utilize the uh, ribosomes uh, for synthesis of the viral proteins. This time, these proteins will be termed as late protein, late viral proteins. Now, Unlike the early viral protein, which are mainly enzymes or the non-structural protein, the late proteins are the structural protein. Structural protein means the capsid protein, the matrix protein. If the virus is having some black proteins, all the proteins which uh, give rise to the structure of the virus are synthesized as late protein. This is a process they follow by all viruses during their replication stages. We some variations we can see, but basically they follow this particular stages of virus replication. Probably it has come to your mind like how they can utilize this particular system until and unless the virus have the control over this particular cell, they will not be able to utilize this system efficiently. Probably some viruses may attach and may penetrate but they are unable to synthesize it because they are unable to stabilize, destabilize and uh, control over the host cells. As a result, they cannot come up with an active infection. So all these factors should be properly available only that the virus can initiate the infection. So this is one logic like why the viruses, uh, their specific, specifics of the viruses. 
where at the same time why certain viruses are not species specific they can infect varieties of species so coming to this point the late messenger RNA will give rise to the second set of protein what we call as the late proteins the late proteins are the structural protein please note it down the early proteins are the enzymes or non-structural protein whereas the late proteins are mainly the structural protein okay this structural protein since this virus replication that takes place within the nucleus so they will again migrate to the nucleus under the influence of certain transport protein and then this capsids will go on self aggregation and that will give rise to a since it is an icosahedral symmetry they will give rise to an icosahedral structure icosahedrons will form and during this self aggregations of the capsids to form an icosahedron one copy of the viral nucleic acids will be accommodated inside this nucleic acids so that will be giving rise to the uh, the the, the uh, nucleic acid structure of the virus but at the same time we know that this particular virus is an envelope viruses so what they will do they will pass through the membrane in the process of release out of these host cells what we call as the uh, uh, release process or the process is called as the budding so uh, after this uh, uh, stage of virus replication the assembly will take place and then once the mature virus particle will go on accumulating inside the host cells then finally they will come out of the host cells and since it is an envelope virus they will carry some part of the nuclear membrane and through some produce channel they will come out of the host cell this is called as the release okay now this uh, actual replication stages as i saw shown it here is the dna virus example now we know that uh, there are different type of dna viruses right we have the single stranded dna viruses so in the single stranded dna viruses <coughs> at the beginning the one copy of the viral dna will convert into double stranded dna utilizing the cellular enzyme and after forming the double stranded the risk process they will follow so similarly in case of the rna viruses again variations are there for example if it is a positive sense rna viruses we know the positive sense rna viruses the viral rna itself acts as messenger rna no transcription occur let us see this example of an uh, <coughs> where a positive sense rna virus yeah this is an example of an uh, positive sense RNA virus, say picona viruses. So they will bind at the surface and penetrations and uncoating will take place. The nucleic acid will be released. So once the nucleic acid will be released, then immediately there will be synthesis of viral protein because the viral RNA itself acts as messenger RNA. No transcriptions will occur. Straight to it will give rise to the translation of protein. And these are the early proteins. So these early proteins, even they will give rise to some uh, late proteins as a structural proteins, and they will be again expressing some uh, viral RNA dependent RNA polymerase enzymes, and then the genomic replication will take place and the assembly and release will take place. So depend on uh, what type of uh, <laughs> nucleic acid this is it example of a negative sense rna virus rhabdo viruses so this is an envelope virus first they will attach it to the cell surface <clears throat> then the endocytosis penetrations endosomes will form then endosomes will fuse with lysosome these are um, ph dependent uh, uncoating and then finally the nucleic acid will get dissolved and the nucleic acid will be released since it is a negative sense rna viruses this rna have to undergo transcription. So from RNA, the messenger RNA have to be formed. Now, from RNA to RNA formation, they need an enzyme called as RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. 
Now, basically, this enzyme is absent within this host cell. We don't have this enzyme RNA dependent RNA polymerase. Rather, we are having the DNA dependent RNA polymerase. So, where from the virus will get this enzyme is that every time, every time when the virus replicate within the host cells, they will carry some molecule of this RNA dependent RNA polymerase in their nuclear capsule. The newly synthesized virus particle within this nucle um, um, uh, uh, your nucleocapsid structures, you will get several molecules of RNA dependent RNA polymerase. Why they carry it? Because they need it at this particular stage. So, when this virus particle will again infect another host cells, when the encapsidation will take place, then utilizing that enzymes, this negative sense RNA will give rise to messenger RNA. And then early protein, late protein synthesis and new virus particles will be formed. So, depending on the nature of the viral RNA, uh, the different transcription strategies you will encounter. So, what you must record is that the negative sense RNA viruses must, must contain RNA dependent RNA polymerase enzyme in their virion because this enzyme is absent inside the host cell. We don't have this enzyme. So they have to carry their own enzymes in their nuclear capsid structures so that they can utilize it for transcription purpose. Similarly, coming to the most, um, um, the different uh, replication strategy adopted by the retroviruses uh, where, uh, where retroviruses is it this one? No. Uh, yeah, uh, let me talk about this retroviruses where <clears throat> the reflection strategy is different again. This retroviruses uh, unique in a sense that they have the reverse transcriptase enzyme. The function of reverse transcriptase is to convert the uh, RNA into double-stranded DNA. Now, these retroviruses, they possess the uh, reverse transcriptase enzyme within its virion. A newly formed virus particle will have 30 to 40 molecules of reverse transcriptase enzyme. And when it will attach to an, another infected host cells, penetration uncoating will take place. But once uncoating will take place, utilizing that reverse transcriptase enzyme, those viral RNA will convert it into double-stranded DNA. Double-stranded DNA having terminal repeats, long terminal repeats. And with the help of this long terminal repeats, the viral genome, this is the viral genome, they will get integrated to the host cell chromosome. And this particular stage is called as the provirus. As I have been mentioning in uh, my earlier classes, all the times when we talk about the retroviruses, like their process is uh, completely uh, different uh, at this particular stage of virus replication. Because uh, when we talk about any organisms, we never heard that the genome of uh, organisms can get integrated with genome of another organism. But this is very much true with the, the, the retroviruses, where uh, the retrovirus, the viral genes or the viral genome can get integrated with the host cell chromosome as provirus. Please note it down the word provirus. And interestingly, this provirus status may remain throughout the life of this individual. This is one reason why it is extremely difficult to uh, get rid of HIV infections in human, HIV is a uh, retrovirus infection in human. So these integrations, uh, what happened, these particular cells, when they will divide, the one copy of the viral genomes will go to the next cell. So when they infect the gonadal cells, even from uh, infected uh, a parent, the virus can also transmit to the offspring. Similarly, we are having a retrovirus infections uh, in poultry called as avian leukosis. Avian leukosis is a uh, uh, tumorogenic viral infections where um, the B cell uh, tumors are formed in poultry. So where 
the, uh, the, the sperm or the ovum, the virus can be transmitted in the form of provirus. So this integration of the viral genome to the host cell chromosome again brings a potential threat to the host cell to undergo cancer. I mean, most of the uh, retroviruses are tumorogenic. They can cause uncontrolled proliferation of cells, what we call as the tumor formation. So the most of the retroviruses, they are oncogenic. They can induce tumor. So this is a very unique phenomenon that we could see in the retroviruses in the replication strategy after uh, en uh, encapsidations, means after uncoating, instead of transcription and translations, the virus will get integrated to the host cell chromosome as provirus. Under certain circumstances, many are questionable under what circumstances, but it has been said that under certain circumstances, maybe actions of uh, some hormones or maybe the actions of some steroid injections or maybe immunosuppression, maybe one uh, factor, uh, this uh, provirus status will convert to the active transcription and translation and new virus particularly will form and they will come out of the host cell and will infect another host cell. So the replication strategy is different. So please note it down, the retroviruses, they possess the reverse transcriptase enzyme. They convert uh, from RNA to uh, dose the DNA and get integrated to the host cell as provirus. Please note down the word provirus, very frequently asked in the examination. So retroviruses, uh, they undergo the provirus status. So these are the different stages. As I said, that the assembly means uh, once the sufficient copies of the genomic uh, DNA or RNA will be formed, and sufficient number of uh, capsid proteins will form, then these capsids will undergo um, self-assembly, either in the form of echocyrons or in case of helical symmetry, the helical fashion, and they will accommodate one copy of the nucleic acids and they will prepare for come out of the host cells. So that's the end of the assembly stage. Then the last is the release. Release means uh, it has been seen that certain viruses, they simply cause lysis of the host cell membrane and they will totally destroy the host cells and the virus will come out. But at the same time, there are many viruses which uh, come out from the host cell in a process called as budding. So lysis and budding are the two process of release. Certain viruses, they adopt the uh, budding process. This is an excellent example of budding process. You could see these are the viral glycoproteins. Could you see this small uh, dotted uh, sonic here? These are the viral glycoproteins which remain encored to the cytoplasmic membrane. The area where these glycoproteins will be encored, the newly encapsidated virus will come and finally they will bud it. This process is called as the budding, just like the uh, yeast, uh, they replicate by budding process. Here also, a small protuberance will produce inside which the nuclear capsids will enter and gradually they will uh, uh, swell and come out of the host cells and they will totally detach from the host cell membrane. Now, um, uh, I, I guess the idea is very clear that envelope, they simply acquire from the host cell during replication. However, the, the, the spike protein that uh, encode into the envelope, these are of virus coded or virus origin. So we call it as an envelope viruses. However, this is uh, the example of non envelope virus, such as the picona viruses. So when the sufficient number of virus particles are formed within the cytoplasm of the host cells, they will increase lysis of the host cell membrane. The cells will burst and <clears throat> the virus particle will come out. These are non envelope viruses and ready for infection to the next virus, next host cell. So, depending on the nature of nucleic acid, whether it is a positive sense, negative sense, uh, uh, some variations we could see in the uh, replication uh, stage of virus. Otherwise, most of the virus, they follow this typical standard replication process. 
again i'm repeating uh first is the touch pen then penetration and uncoating then at the end of uncoating the nucleic acid will be released if it is a dna virus then the nucleic acid will migrate to the nucleus if it is rna virus they will replicate in the cytoplasm as you can see this is an sorry this is an uh where rna virus yeah this is an rna virus uh, nothing to take with the nucleus straight away they are growing in the cytoplasms and new virus particular form okay uh, however there are certain exceptions where uh, one part of the replications they go to the nucleus we'll talk about those uh, exceptions in the respective <coughs> family when we discuss it so once the uncoating will take place then first set of messenger rna we call them as the early messenger rna will give rise to first set of protein called as the early proteins early proteins are mostly the non-structural protein of the virus mainly the enzymes needed for uh virus replication genomic replication transcriptions or even these enzymes help in breakdown of the capsids into individual proteins migration of this molecule within the cells etc etc okay utilizing these early proteins uh, uh there is a huge jump of uh, virus replications or the genomic replication takes place taking the original uh, virus nucleic acid as, as a template uh, several thousand copies will form and from these copies again utilizing the enzymes as early protein a uh, lot many messenger rna will be produced and these are called as the late messenger rna this late messenger rna will come to the cytoplasm to give rise to the late proteins and late proteins are the structural proteins which will help in the formation of the nucleic structures as well as matrix all the structural visible structural proteins will be formed by as late proteins so towards the end of this late protein synthesis we'll see in the cell there is abundant of capsids abundant of nucleic acid so they will start assemble this is the beginning of assembly stage so the nucleic acid will get assembled and this is some sort of auto aggregation process of course several factors are necessary to aggregation in fact there are certain antiviral drugs which uh, prevent the formations of these aggregations and uh, become effective against the viral infection so finally once they will get assembled and they will release out of the cells and there are two processes of release one is by lysis and other is by budding process so Envelope virus is always released by budding process, whereas the non-envelope viruses they release by lysis process. So these are the uh, all five stages of virus replication. So one must be very thorough about the, all these different stages of virus replication. And now probably it is very clear that why we cannot uh, cultivate the virus in any synthetic media, just like the bacteria we use the uh, agar media we cannot use uh, for propagation of viruses they always need a live cells a living cell system is essentially needed for propagation of virus if they don't get a living cell system then they cannot utilize these functions for their own synthesis okay so this is one picture so i just uh, crop it from the murphy's veterinary virology where all the <clears throat> different stages are uh, showing it in a uh, very simple diagram. Uh, I feel that uh, uh, one should remember all the different stages of virus replication. Okay. So, in the present context, uh, mm, mm, just uh, that. Uh, search to uh, COVID-19 virus. So they are, uh, when we talk about the coronavirus family, then uh, we'll speak more about it. Uh, <coughs> they uh, did a uh, LERS, uh, the RNA virus, and uh, they replicate in the cytoplasm of the infected host cells. And then finally, they come out in the process called as the uh, low viruses in the process of budding. They come out of the host cells and the infectious variant virus particles uh, uh, 
against uh, sprays and in fact uh, other host. So from here, what I would like to mention is that uh, if you see, if you try to develop an antiviral drugs, then you have to block any one of these processes or stages of virus replication. <laughs> so basically what happened, if you try to block any stages of virus replication, it will directly affect the whole cell function. As a result, most of the antiviral drugs which has been designed become too toxic for the host cell. It, 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 may, it may inactivate and kill the virus, but at the same time, the host cells will also get killed. So it becomes too toxic. That is one reason why we don't have sufficient number of antiviral drugs for treatment against the viral infections. Unlike the bacterial infections, we can select any antibiotics, sensitive antibiotics, and we can get the um, doses properly, then we can get rid of the infection. But this is not so with the viral infection. If you see the remdesivir, which has been uh, um, uh, suggested as a treatment of uh, the COVID, uh, SARS-2, COVID-19 virus, this is again a nucleotide analog. So that will affect the formation of a newly synthesized uh, RNA copy of the virus. So this is again not uh, so uh, friendly for the host cell. No doubt it can stop uh, the block of the RNA synthesis, newly formed RNA synthesis, but at the same time, it may also affect the host cell function. So with the very careful and uh, limited doses, we can use it uh, as a treatment. So we don't have a good number of antivirals, uh, which are very, very effective in treatment against the viral infection. Uh, against the influenza viruses, some uh, drugs like Tamiflu or Oseltamivir has been developed, which mainly uh, prevent this uh, encapsidation of the virus nucleic acid. So as a result, the virus product cannot replicate. So these are more or less at a safer site or safer antiviral drugs we can use it. But again, the question is that uh, how to make it available inside the host cell cytoplasm abundantly so that it can prevent the virus infection. So there are many issues in the subsequent class, we'll talk about it. But to understand these issues, we must understand uh, the replication process of virus. Hope that this particular sessions will uh, give you some basic idea and information about the virus replication. And taking it as a basis, uh, you can study any type of virus uh, and their uh, replication stages. So broadly, these five stages, so we give maximum process. So this must is for uh, today's uh, uh, session. Uh, in our next session, maybe in the Wednesday, I guess, one to two, or in the regular timing, we'll uh, go on uh, the other aspects of general biology, okay? Uh, thank you very much. Do you have? Uh, it's come down to 29. I don't know. I'm not getting interest much or what. Uh, do you have any uh, specific question to be asked? Please, you can text me and so that I can address those questions in the next class. And uh, taking it as a basis, it will help you in uh, studying the general biology and systematic biology. Okay, stay safe, all of you. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank I'm sir. just closing, yeah, I'm closing the link. Uh, please do put your questions by texting me uh, in the WhatsApps or uh, whatever possible. You can ask me a question also, no issue. Uh, we can have it. I want that all of you must have a very clear idea about the virus replications. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank <laughs> you.